Toronto Summer 2020 Real Estate Update. Hello friends, Yossi here, back with a video about Toronto situation, in the situation. So let's see what's going on. Uh, a few months ago I left you with, you know, the market's going great, everything is good, lots of money comes to Toronto. Uh, we're looking at issues like dollar per foot versus the income you're getting, how many dollars per foot you need to rent versus how many dollars per foot you need to buy. Your break even point, con the calculator, con the calculator.ca, and all these things that have been put kind of on, on a hold uh, because the situation changes. And what happens with the situation changes is the basic premises of life and business uh, are put in question. So the things that we believed in earlier, uh, we're starting to question if this is what you, we should believe in anymore any longer. So if we believe that Toronto is going up and up and up because the whole world's going up and up and up because we're in a, in a crazy expansion of all kinds, financial, situational, societal, technological, anything you want, artistic, everything. Um, we got a bit of a slowdown or is it a slowdown or is it just be, <laughs> we got a huge shakeup that will help us eventually um, grow into a better situation for ourselves and everyone else. So how is real estate coming into all this? It's very simple. Real estate is part of life. You know, we need food. We need shelter. That's real estate. We need health. We need a teacher. We need all the basics that we need for life in order to have a good life. And as a society, we used to have good life, comfortable life for many, many years now. Many of us were born into good, comfortable lives. We don't know any lack of any sorts. And all we know is expansion and growth. And sometimes it looks like we hit a rock, we hit an iceberg, um, <laughs> but that's the way of life to, to help us just push it further, faster. So what's going to happen with the Toronto real estate? This video is about real estate. Um, so, you know, I'm here at King West. I'm Yossi Kaplan, Toronto Real Estate Asian Mortgage Broker with Search Realty and Search Mortgage. Um, I've been working in downtown Toronto for many, many years now. Love it, enjoy it. Made a lot of friends along the way, a lot of good stories, a lot of life lessons. And the question is, you know, put probably th over 300 videos throughout my career up. Um, and the question is, what's going to happen to all these condos? There's a uh, 620 King on this side. 507 Adelaide on that side, and that's building right now. Uh, part of it, the commercial part, which you see here, if you can see it, that's a commercial part, residential part, commercial part. Okay, what's going to happen with this building is that the commercial part has been sitting dormant. There's no one there. Uh, there's Chapters Indigo sitting on a couple floors here, and then Shopify has a whole bunch of floors, and then. The residents. Now, the, the residents here, the owners, they've paid uh, pretty good prices for these condos, six, seven, maybe eight hundred bucks a foot at the very beginning. So, in my opinion, they're safe because that's a that's a good that's good value. Can't beat that. Um, you know, our market is going to have to drop by almost an unfathomable account for these people not to have their value. So, the value is risk maybe on the very higher portions. Um, of the scale, and what I mean is the dollar per foot scale, the PSF scale. So when you buy a condo, remember, you buy a 1,000 square feet, you pay $900 a foot, you pay $900,000 for the condo. You buy the same 1,000 uh, square feet, a couple years later, you pay $1,200 a foot, you paid $1.2 million, 300000 more, a 30% increase from the 900 to the $1.2 million, okay? Okay. Now, the thing can happen in reverse backwards where you pay that 1200 a foot but now it's only worth 900 so you lost 300 now on the way down it's 25 percent on the way up is 30 because that's how the math works 30 over 900 30 percent 30 over 12 1200 25 percent but nonetheless it's, it's it's a significant amount and the reason prices go up and down is because what people believe perceive the value is. That's it. That's all there is to it. Uh, and everything else comes into that. So supply and demand, obviously, if everyone believes that they need to have a home, 
there's not enough homes available, the price will push up because people will be willing to pay more and more for it. But if uh, nobody wants to buy the home, condo, house, or whatever it is, the widget, car, anything, and there's just no buyers, then the price will have to drop until there's a buyer. Okay. So the question for the Toronto market is whether it's homes or condos, the old homes. And that's the old homes for people. If there's enough people that want to live in the houses and the condos. Um, we're good. But if suddenly we, we have a lot of vacancies, then we may have a problem. Now, uh, places like Hong Kong, for example, before, uh, until last year or so, maybe a year or two ago, they used to have a lot of vacant real estate and it would sit there with very high price. And I visited um, and I asked uh, a colleague, a real estate agent in Hong Kong, I said, how did they stay on the market for so long? Don't they want to sell it? Why don't they reduce the price to sell it? And the guy says, no, no, no. That's not how it works here in Hong Kong. What we do in Hong Kong is we buy the property, regardless how many million it is, because it's a store of value. We believe in the in in the value of home, so we invest in home. Obviously, people also buy gold, various coins, dollar, coin, bitcoin, all the coins. You know, you can call them fiat crypto, the coins, they're all coins. <laughs> We don't have a lot of coins right now. Right now it's more digital, but it's still we still call it a coin. We will probably for a long time. So <clears throat> there's two options for these condos right there. If the price were to go down, is because people do not believe in the inherent value of these condos or these homes, or they believe that the current price is too far above what they think it's worth, what they're willing to pay. And if everyone's holding back, then the market will have to come down. Okay. The other way to look at it is, of course, can it break even? Go to the condocalculator.ca, download the spreadsheet. There's a video showing you how to do it. It's very, very easy. Basically, put the price you paid, the deposits, a uh, couple other pieces of information, and it'll tell you what the break-even point is. It'll estimate the break-even point. So if we were to buy real estate solely based on break-even point, like I need to make money off this property at least to break even so it doesn't cost me anything besides the initial cost, it cost me the deposit and the closing costs, all these things. Then price of condos in Toronto will be much, and homes will be much lower than they are now because already in 2018, 19, 20, the price of property exceeded the income you can get that the, the income you were getting in me, on many properties was not enough to cover the cost and still people are buying. Even a 1400 for 1500 for when you do the calculation, you see that the rents you need to achieve on these units is, is way, way higher than the current rent. That means that these, ins, these investors, many of them, thousands of them, anticipate that prices will go up. Either the value of the property will go up or the amount of rent will go up, or both. And the other thing is, just like in Hong Kong, they're looking for a store of value. What it is that they can put their money in and they feel safe. Coffee break. And you can see, I, I, take, I get uh, take a coffee now, it's fine for me. So what do we do about these condos? So the way to do it, the way I'm looking at it is, I'm looking at, I've always done that. I, I, I always look at value, not only the value of the condo itself, but where am I? What is the environment? What are people doing here? So if I'm here, downtown West, King West, you know, I'm just between Spadina and Bathurst right now. Are there, are there enough jobs here? Are there enough homes here? Is there enough stuff for people to do? There's still a lot of people uh, going to work, and I think there will be more coming, more and more and more. And we're going to have some changes. It's probably not going to be over months. It'll probably take a few years, maybe three years, maybe five years, maybe 20 years. But we're moving to 
yet another cycle in this endless uh, game called uh, humanity and life of humanity. And humans always, always, always need a home. So if there's a, uh, enough humans and need a home, we need to have at least that enough of homes. It makes sense so everyone can have roof. And <clears throat> the, the system will, there's always an equilibrium seem to be, even in the greatest times of economic depression, somehow we always manage a society and it doesn't take that long actually to come out of it even better. Lots of changes, obviously. When we switch the letter to fax, there was, oh my God, all the letter carriers, what are they going to do? Well, somehow, somehow that got resolved. When we switch the landline to a cell phone, to a smartphone, people say, what, what all these people going to do? Well, it worked itself out. Every time there's new technology, people say, well, you know, like we switched uh, from the chariot from the horse buggy to the car. It worked out. We switched from the horse to the train. It worked out on and on and on. We switched from uh, people walking around with trays to little robots walking around with trays. It's going to work out. I'm, I'm sure of it. Because every time that you make something new, there's a whole level of support that you need to come up with. So, yes, it may be more technological, but it's fine. It's, it's going to work itself out because you always need... No one can replace a human being. No one can. It's just not possible. Okay. So, overall, I'm, you know I'm an optimistic person. And I always try to see the full half. Because that's the important half. That's the good half. That's the gift half. Um... Now, you know, we may have a prolonged situation where a lot of people don't work and they can't pay any rent and they're depending on government subsidies or whatever and they move back to suburbs, they move with mom and dad. Now, if this happens on a massive, massive scale, absolutely we're going to see some shift. For now, when I look at prices, I can tell you where the deals are. Just down here on Strong. Um, outside of Liberty Village, there's a few, five or six uh, new towers completing. And they look great. They sit right at uh, by Fort York there. And I see assignments there in the 900 foot. And mind you, these people paid six, seven, eight hundred dollars a foot. So they're doing okay, the investors. But there's an opportunity for someone who wants a home just off King, King West, King and Strong, and not in Liberty Village. So a bit better for traffic and to get downtown and all that if you still need to get downtown. But there's also a nice Stanley Park right there. So if you are working from home and you work from your new condo, you got the park right there. So, And you got the lake right there, so that's kind of nice. And uh, Coronation Park, Princess Gates, all, it's all right there. So those are, to me, a very good opportunity for investment. Um, the price is a little down, maybe by fifty or hundred dollar a foot with what it was a few months ago. So let's say on eight hundred square foot unit, you're gonna pay forty to eighty thousand less than they paid you paid before. The original investor still doing okay. The developer sold it, still doing okay. Your mortgage will be slightly smaller. Maybe a couple hundred bucks a month, but that's significant. But that means that the rent can can be, even if you get a little bit less rent, you're still floating. That's okay. So these are kind of the deals I'm looking for. In terms of homes, actual houses, the prices are going up. Um, I'm looking for homes because I have some clients also buying houses. I usually don't talk about houses, but I, I do that. And the prices are up. Every house that I see on the market... Your typical house in Toronto, you know, in the in uh, maybe around Parkdale or whatever, comes up, and what do you know? It's uh, 1.4, 1.5, 1.6, 1 1.7 $1 million dollars for these homes. So the price is is more or less what it was. Multiple offers. Most of these houses I'm looking at, there's just not enough of them, so they come on the market. At one price, say 1.4, they sell for 1.6. A lot of them. So I tell, and, and some of the condos too, they, they put them on a price which is very attractive. They get lots of showing, and then 
we'll take offers a few days from now and don't be surprised this this still happens because good home is a good home and people see, still see inherent value in it and we don't have like a complete demolition of life as we know it especially not in Canada thank God we're in Canada I love Canada I've said it many times before so uh, I think we're in a good position I think uh, as investors there's a lot of work to do we got to get ready look at your portfolio if you want to see your portfolio if you want to get if you want to get me to have a quick look at what you got and give you a value estimate of what could it be worth or where to invest give me a shout lots of opportunities right now both for selling because prices are good so if you need to free up some cash or want to reinvest maybe sell something older and invest in something a little newer it could be good if you want if you need to upgrade your portfolio this is a good time to do it people are still maybe wolf <coughs> forever pay good good uh, prices <coughs> if you look at history of the real estate and the financial system it's it's inflationary I've talked about it before inflation is built in so it's always going up so you need to hedge your you need to hedge somewhere so real estate is part of it gold is part of it you know we know we, we do real estate some other people do other things it's fine um, but overall I think there's some great opportunities available for you right now give me a shout you'll see Kaplan and search realty and we'll have a quick chat and see how I can help you thank you very much have a great day